to true success and how success is accomplished um, in the 21st century, most importantly, or I should say most specifically, really, um, in America. So according to the Merriam-Webster's Dictionary, success is defined as the fact of getting or achieving wealth, respect, or fame. Now, a Strayer University uh, study tells us a little differently um, regarding that definition. During their success project survey, which determines what success means to Americans today, a whopping 90%, 90% believe that success is more about happiness than power, possessions, or prestige. Now, this indicates a clear change in the way Americans are thinking about their personal journey, says Michael Platter, who's the president of Strato University. And I happen to agree. But we definitely are we are seeing a shift in the way that we are perceiving success and and um and I guess acknowledging success. But I want to go back for a moment. I really want to go back and to think about the the origins of this country. Maybe not so far back, but um many of us can agree and believe that America is a country based on meritocracy. And what that is, we we believe that people should and, you know, they do move ahead up, you know, up their ladder, um, whether it be societally, you know, uh, um, monetarily, you know, they're moving ahead based off of their talents, based off of their skills, their merit um, and their achievements. Um, Interestingly enough, know that that term was coined by British sociologist and politician Michael Young um, in his 1958 um, book, Rise to Meritocracy. I'm sorry, meritocracy. It was used to describe a system in which intelligence and merit were the central tenets of society. Um, it was meant to be satir- um, um, a satire, though. It was it was it was a satire in the way that he was describing, you know, a future land or country society where your social status was determined by your IQ and by your effort and all those types of things. So it was meant to be kind of an ironic joke, but America, of course, we. We, we really took that under our wing and we we really happen to take that seriously. And we do assume that those of us, you know, our successful governments, our CEOs, our Fortune 500 companies, all the people that are in these, um, they're filling up these big seats. We assume that they um, got there because they deserve it. We assume that these are the best and brightest. And not to say that they're not. Um, it's just that, you know, recent events especially in the past year, generally in the past decade, are kind of leaning towards maybe a different perspective than meritocracy. Um, With the peaking fame of reality TV and things like that, just from my own personal, you know, my own personal observations, you know, it it seems like people are getting rewarded for for very little effort and people are getting rewarded for things that we um, kind of always looked down on it maybe before or didn't pay much attention to before. And... This can be seen on the other end of the scale as well. Um, It's not even so much about people that are getting rewarded for things that they don't deserve, but there are also people um, that are, you know, working quite as cleanly as one might think it should be, as meritocracy is not necessarily working in the same way that we all perceive it to be. Um, The vast majority of those who succeed rely on much more than just merit. So at Harvard, for example, 45% of students come from families that make $200,000 or more um, per year. And their standardized test scores, originally created to be an unbiased sorting mechanism, which most of us probably do know, increasingly track the wealth and education levels of the test takers' parents. Why is that? Why is Harvard looking into how much money these children's parents have or, you know, these the the I the IQ test looking into you know their, their parents and why is that why does it matter it looks more like nepotism if 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 you don't mind me saying than meritocracy sometimes and in technology that's another that's another field and we most of us consider technology to be one of the most forward thinking you know innovative societies to date um, but we find that executives hiring committees you know venture capitalists. They are seeing merit more and more often in people that look exactly like them. And that's another interesting thing. Why is that? Why are we seeing more and more stuff like that? Why are we, we're trying to make sense of what success is in America, but I feel like with every five years or so, the definition changes. We're seeing different examples as to what success is and how success is being acknowledged. And I want to know exactly how that happened. You know, how how did all this happen? How did a country 
that um, accepted or, you know, strived for meritocracy <clears throat> truly, truly turn into a country that accepts idiocracy and irrationalities and, you know, ignorance even sometimes. Does this say more of our perception of success? I don't know. And how can we truly know what success is if we all have different perceptions of what success is? And how can we even agree on what those different perceptions of what success are if the ones leading us, you know, in this society where we're supposed to be looking up as the ones that are successful, if the ones leading us don't even understand it, the ones leading us don't seem to care about it either. So just to, to, to give you some things to think about, what is success and how, do, how does it matter to you and what do all these things mean to you? Do you think that we are still, you know, a, a country that strives off of merit? Do you think that um, success should be more about happiness and less about power and this whole money system and everything else? I don't know. That's up for you to decide.